In this video, I will show you how to set up a local graph node on your machine with Docker Compose and how to use it to debug subgraphs. I decided to learn local subgraph debugging while I was building a subgraph on the Board Apes NFT contract. I had an error in my code and I couldn't exactly figure out where it was coming from. So instead of deploying my subgraph online again and again, I thought it would be useful to set up a local node and debug there first. But I just couldn't set up a local node manually with Cargo due to some operating system slash package dependency issues. And I found it much easier to do it with Docker Compose since I don't have to worry about installing any dependencies separately. And I decided to make this video because I couldn't find any like useful resources on it. So I hope you find this helpful. And this is not an introductory video to subgraph development. I will only briefly go over the actual subgraph code. And uh, that is so only so that you have an idea about what is it that we're actually debugging. Before moving on with the video, make sure you have both Docker Desktop and Docker Compose set up on your machine. I've already started Docker Desktop on my machine. Okay, so once that is done, you need to simply clone a GitHub repo on your machine. I will leave the link to this in the description. See, the thing is that the source code of the graph node is quite heavy, but to build a local graph node with Docker Compose, we really no only need the Docker Compose.yaml file. So simply clone this repo on your machine and open a like terminal inside the directory where it is, uh, where it is cloned. I've already cloned it on my machine and before we like build a node, we need to configure a few things in the YAML file because this is quite an old configuration and it's slightly outdated. Okay, so the most important thing is that we need to pass a proper archive node URL over here. See any subgraph node needs to be connected to an archive node of the network it is indexing on. So I am using an Ethereum archive mainnet node from Chainstack, but any other like node provider should work just as fine. And there's that. Okay, so spacing is very important in a YAML file. Okay, so do make sure that your archive node is quick to respond because that will greatly influence the speed at which your node indexes data. Also, we need to add an extra ANV variable to this file. So when building a local node, you need really need to set up this uh, env variable because without it, your local node won't be able to index IPFS metadata. And our subgraph on the board apes NFT contract, it does index IPFS metadata. So we need to set this to one. I will also remove Rust log and in place of this, I will add uh, graph log at info and error level. So this is what the graph node docs uh, tell us to use now. So that's what I'll use. This variable can be configured to different output levels of logging. You can uh, like check that out from the graph docs on uh, they have a logging API. So I'm just using the info and error parts of the logging API. That's all we need. And I think the last thing we need to do is this version of IPFS that the YAML file is using is very old and there's really no reason to use it. So I'll just upgrade it to a relatively recent version. Uh, this is relatively new at the time of recording, but uh, you can just change it to anything that you like. Anything works. So I'll just save the file and close it. And that's it. That's all we need to do to set up a graph node on our machine. To start a local graph node, make sure you have Docker com uh, doc desktop running on your machine and then open a terminal in the directory that has your docker compose.yaml file. After that, it is really simple. Just run docker compose up and it will take a while to like set up everything, an IPFS node, a Postgres database, and it will have to build the graph node code and it takes a while. So while that happens, let me just take you through the subgraph code that will be debugging. So this is a very brief overview and I'll just quickly go over what I'm trying to do. So my uh, board apes subgraph has three entities. The transfer entity simply tracks the transfer history of each and every single ape. So every time a transfer event is emitted, we index all of this data. 
the board ape entity simply contains some general data about each to, uh, board ape and it is sorted by the id and uh, this id will simply be the token id of our board ape the property entity simply indexes the ipfs metadata for every board ape so this background clothes during this can have a variety of values and we index all of that and so sort it by the token id of the ape and that's it for the schema the yaml file is standard stuff we only need the transfer event so every time it uh, every time the transfer event is emitted from the contract uh, our subgraph will run this handle transfer function which is defined in the source file over here and let me collapse everything uh, okay it's not much so we just uh, index all of our entities within the handler function and this is it so this is the subgraph that we're going to debug if you see something like this on your uh, terminal this means the graph node is running and we just need to deploy our subgraph and to deploy our buggy subgraph to the local node we just need to run npm run create local and npm run deploy local these are two different commands we'll just run them together and this should work um, put in any version number uh, let me check if i yeah i put in the start block so we need to wait a second over here okay so once uh, our subgraph is deployed to the local node we get a ui url we can just copy it and open it in our local browser uh, now we can run a query like this from our browser from the local url and as our subgraph keeps on indexing more and more data this uh, like query will become more and more accurate as of now it will only show us the data from the blocks that have already been indexed and this is where the debugging part comes in so you'll note we get everything for the board apes and if i remove this and i query transfers this just queries the transfer history and we get this too but if you query the property entity you will note that we don't receive anything at all in this response so this is where the error comes in i definitely wrote all of this code for the property uh, property entity to index everything from ipfs but somehow i'm not getting any response at all from my local data store of my subgraph so there's an error and we need to fix that now before we make any changes to our subgraph to try and find the error we need to remove it from our local node we can do that by simply running npm run remove local at the root of our subgraph project and this will remove the subgraph from being indexed and after that once that is done wait for a second and like just press ctrl c or command c depending on your system and we just need to stop the terminal and it takes a while to do that and we'll wait a couple of seconds after that run docker compose down to shut everything down and for now we can just minimize it now we are like ready to make any changes that we feel are necessary to debug our subgraph and this is a good point to mention that like logging out uh, various parts of your mapping file uh, this is that's like the bread and butter of debugging you want to like take a guess at where the possible error might lie and you want to log that out to check if that is indeed you know if that part of the code is indeed behaving the way you expect it to behave so for my first iteration of debugging i guessed uh, like back when i was actually debugging it i guessed that i'm passing the wrong uri here to the cat method so for that what we can do is to check that i can just log at the info level the full uri so now what uh, will happen is every time the handler function runs since in our yaml file if you recall we configured the graph log to log out info so this full uri will be logged out every time the handler function runs which is what we want and now we can go back and we can uh, like start this docker compose up and this will run the graph node again let me just sit at it for a while making sure it works okay so yeah it'll take a while to spin everything up uh, now since we made changes to our source file we need to compile the subgraph again 
we can do that with graph build and yeah that's done it will happen okay so now our local node is running again we need to just npm run create local and npm run build local i'll call this 0 0.0.2 0 .2. and let me close the old one i'll open vs code and i'll open this again just to refresh the whole thing and that's done we can just take yeah i'll like you can see our uh, node is working and uh, the info thing like you can see uh, the full uri is this thing so this exact hash will show you that uh you know board apes metadata is indeed uh uploaded at this exact ipfs hash so this is correct this is not something we need to change so that brings us back to step one there is something else that is wrong with the subgraph now if i run uh, this thing again if i try to query my entities id from to if i run this it should return me data but like if i do the same thing with properties i'll get the same error as i was getting before if i query this i won't get anything and like at this point it struck me it's not like my entity is returning null as the data right that would mean that the ipfs data being queried is being stored incorrectly no this isn't storing anything at all this entity doesn't have a single instance of it being stored in the graph node so i go back and after a while i figured out what's happening here if you look at the mapping file you'll see that there's this thing called the save method Whenever we create a new instance of any entity, we have to save it to the local store. So in this example for the board ape entity, uh, after all the mapping logic, I save that instance to the graph node permanently with board ape dot save. After a while of checking through this uh, like whole code, I figured out that I haven't done property dot save, as in I didn't save this to my local graph nodes data store. I do this and I run graph build. So this should uh, like correct this error. Again, our node is running. I'll go here and I'll do npm run remove local to remove the old subgraph. npm run remove local and go to the node. So yeah, I think it has stopped. Yeah, so I again stop the terminal. It takes a while. And then I run docker compose down. After adding property dot save again, we have to do graph build. In the meantime, we'll restart everything. Docker compose up. Although I don't think you have to like Docker compose down every time you need to redeploy it. Just remove it using npm run remove local and then deploy it again. And it will take a while to spin up everything. In the meantime, our subgraph is compiled. And yeah that's done again we will npm run create local and deploy local 0 0.0.3 i pass in the version and it will deploy everything and again it will start processing everything and if you see this time our subgraph totally fails let me scroll down yeah you can see there's this thing, oh, where is the error? Yeah, this is what happened with me. If you see entity property zero, missing value for non-nullable field hat. Okay, so this is a fatal error. This means our subgraph has stopped indexing all the data and it's just now like running uh, needlessly. So what we can do is we can run npm run, remove local again to just stop it uh, once and for all. And if, if you stop and think about this error, what's happening here is, this hat property comes from our entity here in property. So it took me a couple of minutes to figure this out. So what happens with them is the, they don't usually have all of these properties. For example, uh, these traits, these are seven traits that a board ape may have, but uh, more often than not, they usually have like four or five or six of these seven traits. So one or more of these may be null for a particular board ape, right? So for example, this is, metadata for a particular ape that I queried and I've like formatted it 
for you to able to see it has six of these seven traits one two three four five six it doesn't have uh, one of these uh, this is like a, a different uh, id i don't remember which token id but this is not token id zero so what's happening here is uh, it is saying for the very first board ape that it's trying to run the property entity for uh, it doesn't have the value hat but if we go to a schema dot graphql uh, if you see the exclamation sign if you put this after a particular property this means that particular property cannot store a null value that's the rule for the graph so what we need to do is we need to remove these exclamation marks for every single property that's like ipfs metadata so that now when we query ipfs metadata for a particular token id these values can be null because again a particular board ape may not have all of these properties so i'll just do graph build again that's done i'll just create and deploy it once more hopefully this time it works and like it will work uh, the last time i did this i'll go again again let's give it a couple of minutes before we actually start querying data so after a while we can query some of it backspace if i run the properties if i query properties again you want to index and you'll see that like it is being indexed and you can now query it so just to be sure i'll query a bunch of them i think there were one two three four five six i'm missing one mouth okay so i'll do mouth and now if i run this you'll see i have the token id and i have all of the ipfs metadata for that particular token id if you uh, like query for this ipfs hash in your browser you'll be able to see the exact image of the board a and that's it like we have been able to debug our subgraph and now you can uh, deploy this debugged subgraph to an online indexer